a record of 11 wins, 3 losses, and 1 draw. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.2 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain by way of Egypt. Introducing the challenger, Ahmed the Butcher. of 16 wins and 4 losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70.2 kilograms. Representing Bulgarian top team and Ross de la Hiva and fighting out of France. Please welcome the reigning, defending, undisputed Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world. Right, gentlemen, you've been over the rails. This is my instructions all the time. If I tell you stop, you stop and break clean. If you want to touch gloves, let's do it now. Go back, come out fighting. Let's go. Here we go, Paul, and let's make some noise! Five years, Carlos Kramer has me buzzing for this fight. We are straight off to the races. Now you're taking the center of the Brave Arena. Telling shot from the champion right off the back. Push that knee in slightly. Attacking that leg again with an oblique kick. One of the more controversial techniques in modern day mixed martial arts, Carrick. I'm an advocate. I think it's worse, way worse to hit somebody in the head. 100%. Cause a little damage there than jack up their knees. Just something that forces you to defend. Both guys trailing leg kicks. Ahmed Amir, the Egyptian national wrestling champion, in with the takedown. But as we know, Amin Ayub so dangerous off his back. He wins by submission to in his career so far. There's three steps here, Phil. You're going to take your man down. You have to hold him down. Those are hard. And then we have to see impact, either impact or potentially furthering position. And those are sequentially harder and harder to do, incredibly hard to take somebody down, even harder to hold them. And then from there, to, to cause impact or to further position, harder still. I mean, I hope does have three wins by armbar in a submission repertoire. Beautiful sweep into the mic position. And right back to where they were again. What an amazing exchange. That was fantastic, Kirik. I mean, I have very dangerous off his back. May choose to open the guard, use the case to spring off and look for an armbar. Three of his eight wins by a submission. Have come by way of armbar. Three by rear naked choke, one by guillotine, one by arm triangle. Trying to isolate an arm there was Amin Ayub. Ahmed Amir doing a good job of squaring off the hips anytime Amin Ayub moves. Oh, we grab with the cage there. Zeki Larkin gave the warning, but what presence of mind by Ahmed Amir to take the champion away from the cage so he couldn't post off it? Absolutely, Phil. It used to be back in the day when you took somebody down, you wanted to jam him up against that cage. It's the opposite now at the highest levels of the sport. You want to deny him that cage because it's easier to keep him on their back that way. Woo, that was a huge elbow attempt. Butcher by name, butcher by nature, trying to carve the champion up with those razor-like elbows. He's One more attempt. Could go for the only Plata. Ahmed Amir is relentless with those takedowns. If Ahmed Amir can get another takedown, it'll be a huge moment for him. If you are a fan of grappling and mixed martial arts, you have been treated so far in the opening three minutes of this bout. The champion of Menayub going out, going after that lead knee again. Those leg attacks can be money in the bank or it can be bank robbery. You can clean out the vault immediately by damaging that knee. 
Ahmed Amir does have devastating hooks. We saw them work to great effect against Clayton Silva. Will he try and replicate his championship winning knockout potential here? Very wise strategy we're seeing here from the champion. He's essentially set up a moat around a castle, and that moat is attached to that lead knee. In order to wrestle him, you're gonna have to bring that lead knee in close enough for him to kick. Well, right now, the castle is under siege by Ahmed Amir. Oh, nice little hook that wobbled Ahmed Amir ever so slightly. Nice head movement from Amin Ayub. A BJJ purple belt in his own right, but I think his skills exceed that purple belt moniker. Train him with guys like Abdul Abdul Ragimov. Of course, you're going to be well versed in the submission aspect of the sport. Nice inside leg kick from the, key, the number one contender, the challenger. Brave Nation even, oh! Nice kind of striking. I was striking. gonna say even when nothing overt is happening, trust me it is, it's being set up, you saw it right there. When Ahmed Amir throws those power shots, Amin Ayub is like the little boy that fell out of the tree, he's just not there. But there's the bread and butter from Ahmed Amir, beautiful takedown. Little guillotine attempt completely denied. Champ going back now to close guard. <laughs> Round ends. Very, very interesting round. There was the striking dominance in the middle stages of the round, going to the latter stages of the round from Amin Ayub. However, the wrestling from Ahmed Amir was sumptuous. He was able to secure the takedown. He was able to cause damage. A very difficult round to score, Kerrick. Extremely hard. I've scored hundreds of rounds. This one was this one was too hard for me to, to put my name on. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. This has been such a great card tonight, Phil. Such an incredible night. Judges were barely necessary, but right now they are doing their work. I guess it really comes down to the subjectivity of the judges, really, and how they interpret the scoring criteria. No scoring criteria is entirely infallible, but again, it comes down to the interpretation by the judge himself. If I was forced at gunpoint to give it to anybody, it would probably be the challenger or Ahmed the Butcher Amir. But as I said, it's anybody's guess at this point. All I know for sure is that Brave Nation, we're winning. This fight's got it all. Deggy Logan just calling for the tile, a little bit of excess moisture there on the floor. Once again, Brave Nation, we apologize for the little delay in the action here, but this is Brave Combat Federation. It's fighter health and safety first, last and always. If we've all got to wait a little bit for some more action, we're gonna just to make sure there's no water left on the floor that somebody could slip and hurt a joint on. The only thing these fighters should be slipping is punches, Kirik. <laughs> oh, they're gonna be slipping punches of plenty, like you saw right there. I do enjoy the boxing of Amin Ayub, but that's a good shot to the body. That was fair and level from Deggy Lorcan. Ahmed Amir pointed to the ground to, and say that he slept on the water. Deggy Lorcan said it was your team spilled it. Nice cover there from Amin Ayub. Phil, the composure being shown by the champion it is something truly extraordinary to behold. Shots come close, shots glance off his head, shots catch him, and his composure remains complete. He's just so quick with the hands. At the minute, he's so far in the opening minute of the second round, two of five championship rounds we're into, Amin Ayub is leading the dance. Finishing well with the leg kick. Champ caught a shot to the jaw, touched his nose in a, a gesture that goes back to the Roman gladiators. I mean, I of course, is a former European kickboxing champion. He does have that pedigree, so well-rounded, and again, like I said about Marcel Grubinski, I mean, I is so well-rounded and represents that modern 
fighter, but Ahmed Amir, and with the takedown, needs to be wearing the guillotine. How tight is this? Position. Can Ahmed Amir pop the head out? This looks so tight. The head has been popped out. Ahmed Amir is safe. Phil, that was about one inch of positioning away from a submission. Oh, beautiful step over from Ahmed Amir, just solidifying the position now. Great Nation, the champion's guard has been fully passed. Positioning alone doesn't count for a lot. Under the refinements of the unified rules of mixed martial arts, what we need to see now is impact. I mean, I may try and use that underhook to, to create a little bit of a dogfight here. If he can dig underneath for it. Ahmed Amir trying to just wear that pressure on the champion. Trying to work a crucifix. It's coming. Oh, there's a that's beautiful work for the champion. This is mixed martial arts at the highest level. Uses the underhook expertly to get into that dogfight and sneak out. Beautiful. This is a fantastic fight, Kerry Tunes. Phil, the champ is, is just almost eerie in his defense. He turned his knee in to check a kick before the kick began. This is what I'm talking about when I say his composure is complete. He's reading everything. That is a huge minute for Amin Ayub to be able to defend the takedown and get in on a submission himself. Ladies and gentlemen, join the conversation using the hashtag BraveCF54, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Let us know your thoughts on tonight's fight. Let us know if it's going to be a case of and you or if it's going to be a case of and still. Ahmed Amir with a cheeky little headbutt there perhaps. More so an accidental coming together. A little bit of blood coming out of somebody. I think it's Ahmed Amir. We're seeing the champion landing more shots from bottom than the challenger is from top. But again, because the challenger is on top aesthetically, it looks like he's the man who's in control of the fight. Absolutely. To the average fan, it may look like he is. I'm not sure he is on the judges' scorecard. There's what we need. That is impact. But what you saw right there is when you go for impact, you need to create enough distance for the opponent to get out from under that form of control. Ahmed Amir trying to create a little bit of distance so he can land those shots. Amin Ayub on the bottom trying to munch some sort of offense to do so. He needs to open that guard. He needs to move the hips. These shots from the bottom are doing damage from the champion. They are. Brave Nation, when you throw a shot directly against the ear, particularly as the fight goes on, it can have a, a very significant effect on the struck fighter. And there we go! Round two has come to an end. I am loving everything about this fight so far. From the work of Ahmed Amir to get the takedowns, then the work from the bottom of the champion, Amin Ayub, still landing damaging shots. And I think Ahmed Amir has a little bit of a cut over one of his eyes. We've got world-class cut men here. They're applying ice to there. They're applying grease to there, so the cut doesn't rip any further. I have every expectation that that cut will be dealt with, and here is our Green Hill replay. Phil walk us through. There you see that beautiful takedown from Ahmed Amir. Needs to be wary of the neck when he does that. Somebody as quick as Amin Ayub could snatch that up. Some shots from Ahmed Amir on top. I'd like to see some of the shots landed by the champion. We see some of them there, just keeping himself honest with shots. As you say, he's trying to affect the equilibrium of the challenger by punching through the ear. Perfectly legal shot behind the ear is illegal, on the ear, perfectly legal. The ear is the key, Brave Nation, as you're watching this fight, particularly on the ground. Watch and see if any glove touches the ear. If it touches the ear, it's okay. If it's all the way behind the ear, not so much. 
Amina Yuba, master of counter striking, trying to land that lead hand hook. Oh, huge uppercut! Amina Yuba has done a good job to eat that shot. Ever so slightly when he comes in, Carrick. I feel like the champion has a read of that. He does. What's happening here, Phil, is he's trying to do back what happens to him. He eats a couple of big shots. He tries to eat some big shots of his own. It's an everything you can do, I can do better mentality. But it doesn't always work in this sport. Well, that's another huge moment for Amina Yub to be able to defend the takedown with that beautiful sprawl of that shot, the first time we've seen the shot shut down like that. What we may be seeing here is the effect of some of those hits, some of those kicks to the legs, some of those shots to the head. Ahmed Amir turning it up. Of course, Ahmed Amir has been into these championship rounds a number of times. This will be the first time, should the fight progress to the fourth round, that Ahmed Amir has gone beyond the third round. Trying to pop in with that knee. The composure being shown by the champion is, is, a, is a thing of beauty. It's a work of art. Whatever happens, his eyes are directly on his opponent's team. He's slipping ever so slightly and bringing shots of his own. It looks like he's found to fill the distance from which the takedowns are not a complete danger anymore. He's doing a good job of leading the dance at the minute. It's the champion of Minayu who's controlling the center, who's dictating where his opponent's going. There was a head movement, there's an anticipatory backing up. Very soon you're gonna see those exact same, one of those two movements, and it'll be followed up on. I wonder if part of the game plan from Minayu was to drag Ahmed Amir into the deep waters and see how he goes. Minayuba let all the loose are able to get those shots off with serious pop. Mixing in the leg kicks too. Bill, I think a combination of those leg kicks, the straight shots to the knee joint, the low kicks to the thigh, those have slowed the legs down and now with a little bit of distance management, that double leg takedown may no longer be the threat it was in rounds one and two. It's always predatory this approach from Amin Ayub. Just constantly staying in the face of his opponent, edging forward, forcing his opponent where he wants him. They call him fierceness. This is why. I'm in a mirror. This is a jungle of fierce, Phil. And that's what you're seeing here. I'm in a mirror. Needs to be careful of circling too much into that lead hand, into that hook. That's a good shot to the body. Seconds to go in the third round. Can Ahmed Amir survive until that round? Ahmed Amir looking to blaze back. Oh, and he did it! That's big. The third time was a charm. This gives Ahmed. I was going to say this gives Ahmed Amir a little bit of respite, but right now he's trying to land nasty, nasty elbows. Huge moment though for the KHK Team Bahrain exponent. He knows now he can still take his opponent down to the ground. If that shot had been stuffed the third time, I think he'd have no more confidence in his takedown. And therefore, 
Don't believe he has no more ability to take this fight down to the ground where he wants to get it. But right now, Kerrick, this is where the championship medal of a mixed martial arts professional is tested. For the first time in his professional career, Ahmed Amir is going to a fourth round. This is uncharted territory for him. This is where Ahmed Amir lives his life. He is the championship fighter. He has done it a number of times. You have to theorize going into the fourth round, the distinct advantage stands with Amin Ayub. It does right now, Phil. I'm watching very intently in the corners to see what the two corners have to do. One of them is focusing mainly on restoring physical condition because, of course, once you get a little a sets of physical condition back, you feel like you're back in the fight. The, the, the mind and the body are completely interrelated. The other side, we're getting some very specific technical advice. Brave Nation, it is impossible for us to communicate how long five minutes can be. Unless you've been caught in the middle of a forest fire, there is nothing that feels as long as five minutes. You multiply it by three, and not a lot of human beings on Earth can do it. And now we are in the championship rounds. This is the very definition of G Waters. Speaking of deep water, that's exactly Dickie Lurgan having to rein the fighters in a little bit. I mean, are you not impressed by the complaints of water on the mats? Here we go into the championship rounds, Carrick. Amin Ayub, renowned for his gas tank. Able to maintain a relentless pace and turn that up incrementally as the fight progresses. Phil, without exaggeration, Amin Ayub looks better than he did in the first three rounds. I agree. He looks completely warmed up right now. And he's just out of reach when Ahmed Amir tries to fire in those strikes. Ahmed Amir looking to come in at angles. Playing the outside a little bit. Damn! That was his first try. It took him three times to get his opponent down in the last round. Nice inside the leg kick from the challenger. Again, Ahmed Amir just throwing reckless abandon, trying to get those shots off, dipping the head ever so slightly. If I can get a sense of that, I'm very much sure Amin Ayub can. Second takedown was not just stuffed. It appears as, as if it may have been reversed. Schoolyard headlock. Ahmed Amir needs to be careful of giving up his back here if Amin Ayub pumps the back out, which he has done. Anticipation from the champion to ride out that position. The butcher looking to collect himself, catch a couple of breaths, and then rise up to standing. Fierceness having none of it. Has that figure four grip more so to break the grip of Amin Ayub than to go for anything offensively. They use this to try and switch positions. Can't quite see just how deep he has it. Butcher's in on a figure four. In this round, very hard to finalize, but you can use it to further position, oh. as you saw right there. Grammy roll from the champion. Denied, ends up. Bottom side control. Midway point of the fourth round. Ahmed Amir, the challenger on top. Does he have enough steam left to land? Some nasty ground appointed. Phil the Butcher has an exquisitely careful game he has to play. If he throws tiny little shots, they won't count for much. If he gets a little bit of distance, they're going to count, but it's not going to last. Why? Because on the ground, distance is power. To get power, you need distance. That gives your opponent 
the chance to escape. Ahmed Amir, a fantastic submission fighter in his own right. Seven wins by submission. Three rear naked chokes, two triangles, one armbar, one guillotine. So knows exactly what he's doing down there. Big shot from Ahmed Amir. The butcher trying to land big, big shots on the top now. Watch out for the armbar. Oh, this looks tight. Ahmed Amir does a fantastic job. This fight is unreal, ladies and gentlemen. What a championship fight we have here. Brave Nation, how do you like the butcher's heart? Everything, this fight has everything, Kirik. Oh, what a transition. This fight is, I am not intelligent or eloquent enough to describe, to use enough superlatives to, to communicate just how much I am enjoying this fight. Those knees are money in the bank. Drive the point of that kneecap into the thigh, into the hip. Another take down. Takedown gets a lot easier. Ahmed Amir trying to land elbows and the amount of time spent on top by Ahmed Amir is that potentially enough time to revitalize him going into the fifth round? It absolutely is but the big thing that he needs to do here is cause some damage, is cause some impact. He's doing it right there but he's given a lot of space. That space is going to be used to regard and oh, Another incredible Phil, it is not impossible. It is not impossible that right now, this bout is 38 to 38, and that means whoever wins the final round wins the fight and is the champion. Yeah, Kerry, that's 100% conceivable it's because it's been such a back and forth fight. Again, it comes down to the subjectivity of the individual judge scoring the fight. Could be looking at two rounds apiece, could be looking at three to one. I'm just, I'm, I wouldn't be confident in scoring the fight one little bit. Thanks to Green Hill, we're getting a look at some of the great action we had. We saw a figure four on the arm. It was unsuccessful, but it was used to move to a neutral, more neutral place. And now we see my favorite moment of that entire round. That was an absolutely exquisite sweep. But again, the challenger bounces back on top. Rears back, lands some elbows. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, this is it! Here we go, fifth and final round. This for all the marbles, this to become the first man to defend the belt, to become the first Egyptian man to hold a legitimate world title in mixed martial arts. Both these guys have it all to play for. Nice work to the body from the champion. Beautiful stiff jaw from the chunk. Then the jab shift. Spray Nation is this high level mixed martial arts. When you go from your left side forward and you shift to your right left side forward, it's like being used to, to driving on one side of the road and all of a sudden being stuck in a place where you're driving on the other side of the road. It's very disorienting. Now you're just shy with that knee. Starting the fifth like he started the fourth, dictating the pace, the ebb and flow, the cadence of this fight. Huge takedown for the challenger. Could that be a championship winning takedown? The champion is doing a good job, Phil, of landing significant damage from the bottom, and there it is. A wonderful transition. With the sweeps. I was just about to say, I don't think he's worried, and he wasn't. Dirty, dirty foot stomps from the champion of Mina Yud. Very slick, you stomp the toes and then throw a shot all the way up to the nose. Making your opponent worried about his toes and nose. Again, 
Ahmed Amir needs to circle away from that pile hand of the champ. Champ is shifting on him. He's going back to that right side forward stance. Huge shot to the body from Ahmed Amir. Look at the sprawl. He took flight. Watch out for the Anaconda choke. Close. He's hit the leg. Anaconda attempt. He's hit the leg. This is tight. But Ahmed Amir survives it. What is going on? Butcher. Chip calls him up. Defender still light on his toes. Bouncing, moving his head. Looking to strike at angles. Waiting for that perfect moment to level change and get it on the hips. Fierceness. The champion stalking. the champ so far takedown has been single leg takedown has been completely denied nice use of the wizard oh and Ahmed Amir ends up on top Phil what a fight we are treated to here I have absolutely no idea how you even start to score this fight Kerry oh to be a judge in mixed martial arts This has been one of those nights, Phil, where most of the time we don't need you, but when we need you, we really, really need you. Now the champion is on top. How do you, how do you score this back and forth? Reverse triangle. Attempt. Hips are being controlled. There's potential here for Kimura as well. First things first. Control those hips. Still trying to work for the submission. Trying to work for that triangle. Good posture from Ahmed Amir, but dives right back in. Fully passed. I love you, Ahmed. Please. Crowd just shouted, I love you, Ahmed. I do too. And I love you, Amin. Less than a minute, Brave Nation. This fight is an absolute war of attrition. to inflict some impact from on top. Some knees to the body, a push elbow. Another transition, another reversal here from the champion could completely change the complexion of this fight once again. Right now, believe it or not, the champion is, just for this few seconds, where he was on bottom, he's winning that because he's landing more shots. He's causing more impact. The supporters of Amin Ayub booing to try and get the stand up. And Amin Ayub's back to his feet, but Ahmed Amir puts him on his back. Kerry, this is crazy. This is Brave Combat Federation. Wow. What a fight. Perhaps the greatest title fight in the history of Brave Combat Federation, Carrick. An absolute honor to call, but now comes the complexity of scoring the fight. Phil, it all comes down to how these judges score ground control. If they score ground control heavily, it's gonna be and new. If they discount ground control, look only at impact, it's gonna be and still. I can make an absolutely stellar argument for either fighter having won this by 48, 47, or even bigger. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, thank you for watching this with me. This is gonna go down, as Phil said, I believe is the greatest title fight in Brave Combat Federation history. You see some of the closing seconds of the fight. You see the challenger's face contorted in pain, and what did he do in that situation? He reversed it, came out on top.
Brave Nation, both corners, very, very rightly, feel that their fighter has won this fight. And I say very, very rightly, because I can make an exquisite case for both of these fighters winning this. Short of 50-45, not a single score is going to surprise me tonight. Decky, the bandit, Larkin is gathering the fighters to center stage. Muhammad, the hawk, Shahid is entering the Brave Combat Federation cage with the world championship belt. Brave Nation, all we need now is the roaring lion, Carlos Kramer. He's the man with the cards. He's the man who's going to tell us the official decision. The Roaring Lion is seated right to my left. He's doing a little bit of quick math. I know he's just moments away from being done. We are all waiting and holding our breath because we don't know what this score could possibly be because it could possibly be just about anything. The Roaring Lion is now standing. Crossing his T's, dotting his I's. We have dignitaries in the ring. Brave Combat Federation is where you learn to say your excellency. It's where you learn to say your highness. It's where you learn to say Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Mayor. This is Brave and here is Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible main event. Give it up for both of these warriors. After five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored the bout. 48, 47 for the new Brave Combat Federation Lightweight Champion of the World from KHK Team Array and Egypt. Give it up for Ahmed the Butcher. Ah!